Boop. This is gonna be our light setup for now. Dylan Wabrowski and I am currently converting this van. So today we just pulled all of the seats out. This is a 2003 Chevrolet Express chariot conversion van. Um, it's rocking a 5.3 liter V8. I believe that is LS. I have no clue. I bought it for two grand. It had an oil leak and uh, rusting running boards and a uh, mass absolute pressure sensor reading low. So small oil leak and a bad sensor and a little bit of rust. Frames rusted, but it's, it's not bad. Um, for, and two grand, 135,000 miles, and it needs shocks all around. So I figure I already have about three grand invested into this. I have two grand for the initial cost of the van. I have 236 for the title transfer. Fuck you, Uncle Sam. Um, 240 for my Bluetti EB3A. Uh, my Bluetti EB3A battery. Excellent power bank on a budget. Um, 10 bucks for this ladder that's going to go on the back. And that ladder is going to be for a sports vista storage rack on top and potentially solars um what else has been invested about 300 dollars of mis miscellaneous supplies i bought a summer shower i bought this stool collapsible stool collapsible toilet propane um and propane accessories and uh just a couple a couple other odds and ends that you're going to need for van living now i want to see if i can get this lighting better on me is that better? That looks a lot better, but now it's glaring in my eye. I'm going to have to kind of lean forward. Otherwise, uh, we get this kind of a shot. So, yeah, I think I made out pretty well. I have three grand invested now, and all the repairs I mentioned will probably be another $1,000. Uh, if I did it myself, maybe 400 but my days of working on cars are over. The last major job I did was a timing chain and water pump on my Chevy Cobalt. I don't want to work on cars anymore after that. Um, the two biggest jobs I ever did with that and a clutch on a Volkswagen Jetta. And my axle, axle bolts were stripped. So we had to drop the transmission with the fucking axles in them. So we had to move, remove the subframe and we had to swing out the <clears throat> this whole thing. I, I don't like working on cars. I'm okay. That and I sold most of my tools. Bit of a background on me. Um, I've been in the workforce for eight years now. I'm 24 years old. I have zero dollars. I have zero savings. I, 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 I got nothing. I got nothing. And it's not through a lack of trying. Um, you know, I, me I messed around with investments. I still have some investments. Um, so a little bit of money growing. I jumped on the crypto train. Um, made a couple hundred dollars on Dogecoin, but that ended up just kind of screwing up my taxes. So... Um, else not through lack of trying i just you know i've i've worked uh 40 hour work weeks since 18 years old um i've only been unemployed three times one for one time for three weeks the last month of july or the last week of july in 2018 through to halfway through august i was unemployed i was um i don't count COVID. everybody was unemployed uh, but I was employed, unemployed for one full year uh, due to that. So I guess we'll say four times. I was unemployed from November 22nd, 2022 to January 28th, 2023. Then I was unemployed ja um, June, um, I think it was about late June 2023 to about mid-July 2023. Um, I've been in college before. I did 40 hour, I did full-time full -time college, full-time work. Um, I did 80, 90 hour work weeks for two years in a pizza shop. Um, so, and I've learned a lot about the world and I've learned a lot about myself. 
Now, I give you this background because you say, well, so why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? Um, and you see a lot of videos online today. Everyone's talking about hyperinflation. Everyone's talking about housing. We'll never be able to afford housing, blah, 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 all that stuff. And that's not true. You can get that stuff. Um, the sacrifices you need to make along the way, uh, I don't want to make those sacrifices. You know, I don't want to sacrifice my prime years. I also had a back injury recently, and that kind of that messed with me. I was like, eight years of working, and all I got is a bulging disc? Huh. But, um, you know, I don't want to spend these prime years just working. It's not that I don't want to work. It's not that I don't have an excellent work ethic. It's that I want... The, the, the moments I do remember are going to my cousin's wedding are, you know, visiting my aunt in Virginia at her lake house, are, you know, going up to Albany to visit my friend who moved there, um, numerous, numerous, numerous Albany trips, uh, you know, and all these things are outside of work. So while everything I remember about my life is outside of work, and everything I don't remember, except for like the save one or two moments you have at work that are funny, you know, if you're working retail, there's always that one moment with like a funny customer or you had a cool coworker, but he quit three weeks later. But you don't remember most of work. I remember what I did. Like, I remember what the job was. I don't remember doing it day to day. I don't. So I don't want to waste my prime years physically and mentally and emotionally and everything. I don't want to waste my prime years on something like that. And two, I don't want to miss out on the moment of spending time with my family and my loved ones. Um, I understand how everything works. You know, I, I, I understand how the credit system works. I understand how the stock exchange works. Um, I understand what, what I call real world economics or you gotta be careful with the real world term. You get mixed up with the Tates and the matrixes and whatnot. But, uh, you know, I mean, I understand how things work. You know, I don't expect me as a lo like low skill laborer to get paid my worth. I don't have any worth <laughs> in regards to working some random job. That's why you get paid so little. You're not taking any of the responsibility. You're not taking any of the risk. Um, you don't have any, if something goes wrong, it just goes to the next person and it kind of goes up the line all the way up to regional managers, district managers, up in the corporate, up to CEOs. Um, so yeah, you're not gonna make any money. So I'm not foolish. I'm not the kind of person that believes that just because I've worked for eight years, I'm worth 25 an hour. No, my labor is worth nothing. Um, okay, so now some people will argue, well, 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 this is around the time that you want to build skills and you want to find a career. Yeah, you could say that because as you age, it does get harder to work and do tasks and commit things to memory. And there's a lot of reasons why you would want to do that when you're young. Um, however, if there's anything in life that I've learned is that anything I set my mind to, I can do. Okay. In 2021, I had nothing. And within three months, I had two cars, a full-time job and an apartment again. And I started with nothing. And within three months, we had all those things. Um, November of 2018, I decided, man, I I'm just going to be stuck working these minimum wage jobs. I need to go to college. And within three months, I was in college. And that lasted for about two and a half years. Uh, well, no, 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 not two and a half, two years. I'm over exaggerating. 2019 spring through to uh, 2020 fall or 20, no, 2021 spring. Yeah, 2021 spring over two years. I've been working all day, so my math's a little messed up. COVID, COVID happened and my life fell apart and I got out of college. Um, that's a separate, separate story. But, uh, but you know, so... The way I figure is if I can get a bachelor's degree in four years, why do I need to be age 20 to 24 to get it? Or why do I need to be age 26 to 30 to get it? Anybody can go to college. You just need to have the resources available, either FAFSA, scholarships, grants, or just work and pay for it yourself. So I see no rush to do that. If I choose that I want to live, I don't want to live this alternative lifestyle anymore, I can essentially go, okay, um, Let's pull myself up by the bootstraps and uh, find a little setup with some roommates, start working a little job, you know, um, really hustle down, get back in college. I mean, within four to six years, 
college educated, decent job. From there, you can go and, and apply for the, the um, first time home buyer's loan and the, the federal, uh, what heck is it called? Fed, federal, federal mortgage loans and things like that and get yourself in a house. And that's what got me to thinking and what got me to realize, and I want to do this, is that the higher up you get in life, the more debt you have. The difference between an average person or middle class person with their debt and a more successful rich person with their debt is they kind of move the debt around. They have enough areas to move the debt around. A middle class person just has this big debt and then they have their income just chipping away at it. And the higher up a person is and the more rich a person is, they have this debt, but then they say, okay, let me move some of it into my company here or let me, let's have this company purchase some of the debt or we have this stream of, of, of revenue, so let's get more debt to pay this debt off and now we have this debt and all these streams of revenue and all these things going around. And they're able to manage it. That's the difference there. That's what I'm trying to say is that they can manage the debt which gives them the quality of life that they need versus a middle-class person is just burdened. Um, and it does not sound like an enjoyable life for me. I don't want to do that. Um, and I believe that debt is slavery. As long as you are indebted to someone, something, or some entity, then you will be chained to whatever job you're working. And I don't want that either. I want to work and I want my money to be mine. And I want my money to invest into something I can say that I have or own brings me into a whole different topic because if you own a house you really don't own it because you have to pay property taxes on it and your property taxes is goes based on your assessed home value so if you live in an area where you get a bunch of richer people moving in and you're the poorest person in the neighborhood you'll get booted out eventually because you won't be able to keep up with the property tax so for right now this makes sense and i don't see myself wanting to pay rent again i'm tired of losing i calculated how much rent i've paid in my lifetime so far in eight years and i believe it was uh but like somewhere between the 80k and like 110k range and i thought to myself wow with that amount of money i could purchase a property and build a modular home on it with that amount of money i could build a completely decked out tiny home or, or, or van conversion. I can buy one of those Mercedes Sprinter vans. No problem. Sorry, I just noticed one of my uh, one of my blinds was kind of sick and crooked. Well, anyway, I'm talking about a whole lot of something while simultaneously talking about a whole lot of nothing. The point of this video is nothing in life is a rush and we all experience things in different time frames. Some people stay through high school until they graduate. Others drop out and pursue different ventures. Some people get out of high school, go into college. Some people go into a trade. Some people do nothing. Some people will go and travel the world. Some people will go and uh, learn a hands-on skill. Uh, you know, and there's no certain way to do it. There truly is no certain way to do it. Now, a lot of people would have you think you're 18, you're a senior in high school, and you get out, you go into college, so 18 to 22, let's say you took a break, you're 23, you're 23, you have a college degree, you're entering the workforce, you would be around my age, and you would start building up your work history and your resume, and by age 30, you would have college degree and a good standing resume. If you have no gaps in your resume, if you haven't changed employers, if life circumstances haven't gotten in the way, and things like that. And that's kind of a steady path so that once you're 30, you can build wealth and assets through your 30s and your 40s. Maybe you have kids as well. Um, I mean, shit, you're, you know? I, and I started looking at things in years. You spend 18 years in school. You have a 30-year fixed mortgage. You have four years in college. You raise one child. That's another 18 years. I mean, you're, 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 you're old. You're ancient at that point. So it doesn't have to be linear like that. You can get out of high school, work a trade for 10 years, make a lot of money, purchase a home, then go to college. You could get out of you could get out of high school, go to college, get the degree, have the debt, purchase a home, but now you're str balancing and struggling with student loan and mortgage debt and then basic costs and car and everything and whatnot. A lot of the things that we're seeing me living in this van is that I see all these problems that these people are dealing with 
and problems I've personally dealt with in my own experience, although I would argue a bit more harsher than debt, and I don't want to do that. I don't want to be enveloped in that. But anyway, if you get out, there's no linear, there's no linearness. There's no linearness. If you're in high school watching this, or you're just out of high school watching this, or you're in college watching this, chill. Chill out. Okay? Chill out. Seriously. Because life from 18 to 20, when you're 20, is so much different than when you're 18. Life from 20 to 22, so much different. Life from, from 20 to 24, or 24 to 30, it's so much different. And oftentimes, what you think that your life would be like in the future is over-glamorized. This is a perfect example. I know I've over-glamorized this in my head because I'm freezing my ass off right now and it's like about to be April. Now, I could just put on two pairs of pants and throw on a hoodie, but I over-glamorized it. I also overestimated how much time I had to prepare this van and now I'm sitting in a blank space that I still need to throw a bed into. <laughs> um, so, you know, you, you, life, life, life happens. You can't really control. You can attempt, you can attempt to prepare and of course make smart decisions and make good decisions and take care of the people you love and your friends and your family and take care of your business but you can't exactly control life. You can have a set path in mind, but you can't control it. You can't keep yourself on that path because if you hit a bump and you go on this path, you're gonna spend so much time trying to swerve back on that path, you miss the mark entirely. But if you hit that bump and you just take a little side road for a second and turn back on, be fluid. I often sit in nature and meditate. When you're in nature and there's wind gustling, you see a lot of people, or even rain, when it's raining, you see a lot of people, oh, you know, get the umbrella and, and, and hide under the umbrella, or the wind's coming and they're like, ah, you know, they're holding on to their hat and whatnot. And, and that's us as humans, that's our nature. Now look at a tree. If a gust of wind hits a tree, the tree rocks, and then it just, it goes with the wind, and then it just goes right back, unbothered. Now, if we were trees, we would get hit with the wind and we'd be pushing all like this and then we'd end up snapping back this way and flipping all around and hurting ourselves. So be fluid and be adaptable. And whatever adaptation looks like to you, my adaptation is this. I'm really obsessed with this freaking ladder, dude. Like this thing is so, I might just keep the, this, this ladder I might keep even after I'm done living in a van. I just, it's, I don't know, it's its like almost like a pool ladder, like I'm just, I think I'm obsessed. I think I need to get it out of my way. But yes, the entire point of this video, live life how you want to live it. Um, live life how you want to live it, and as long as you are not harming anyone else, and you are not bringing dishonor onto the people that care for you or your family. And as long as you are not disrespecting authority and you're not disrespecting the public. Do whatever the hell you want if you hit those three things. Do whatever you want. You know? This is America. It's not all bad. It's not all bad. There's a whole lot of bad in it. But it's not like this. the internet and media has been portraying it. It is not that bad. It's, it's bad. Every place has its badness. But for the most part in this country, you're free to do whatever you want. I can live out of this van if I so choose to do so. So long as I'm doing my due diligence as a citizen and respecting those around me and not really causing a, a ruckus, staying away from drugs, Stay away from drugs. I've never gotten into hard drugs, but plenty of people I know have, and, and they're not here anymore. Stay away from drugs. Um, I actually just had a situation with some people here sleeping out of a car doing drugs, and I said, there's nothing wrong with sleeping out of a car, but what you're doing is wrong. Um, but So in this country, I mean, as long as you hit those marks and, uh, and you are 
a responsible person and a logical person and uh, you keep sharpening your mind and, and you don't let your emotion control you, then you can do anything in this country. Be that living out of a van or becoming a master tradesman and building a company or going to college and getting a degree and climbing a corporate ladder. You, can, you The options are there. You know? So I think I want to end these videos when I do them is I want to end with, with one final quote to kind of sum up whatever I've been talking about. I think the end of this video will be blame no one except yourself. Let me repeat. Blame no one except yourself for then no one but yourself can stop you. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, stay squeaky clean. Please don't smell like dookie when you're walking in public. Nobody likes that. Stay, stay squeaky clean. Live your life. Respect your fellow man. And have a great night. <sighs> Leaning over hurt my knee, man. <laughs> Whoa.